Hi, my name is Jenny Allen, and we are at the Gospel Coalition for Women, and it is such an honor to be with Susan Hunt today um, because I have read your precious books to my kids growing up, and I know you do many different things, so why don't you tell us a little bit about um, the different things that you have been a part of in the last few decades. Decades is right. <laughs> I've been around a long time, Jenny. Yeah. Well, I started out with children's material, writing Sunday school curriculum, and then uh, moved into women's ministry, and my heart was captured there as well as with the children's ministry, and so there have been books for women as well as books for children. And lately, um, a big passion, and you're actually here speaking it, about it, is this discipleship model taken from Titus 2. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that, too? Actually, that concept captured my heart. Uh, about 25 years ago when I became director of women's ministry for our denomination, the Presbyterian Church in America. And back then we did not have Gospel Coalition. We did not have all of the resources that we have now. And so I went to the only passage that I knew that spoke about women and it was Titus 2, 3 to 5. But since then my passion has intensified because I've come to see that concept in light of the, the meta-narrative, the big story of the Bible. And so really my vision for Titus II Discipleship Ministry has expanded tremendously over the last 25 years. So what does it look like? I know the vision is the older women would pour into the younger women. What right. do you see that, how is that fleshed out? Right. Well, Titus, the book of Titus is actually written to a young pastor and so this is not just a mandate to women, it's a mandate to the church. And so my particular passion is to equip women in a local church to obey this calling to disciple other women. All discipleship is not to be gender specific. Jesus told us to make disciples and to teach them all that he has commanded. But one of the all things he has commanded is that we are male and female and that matters. And so some discipleship is to be gender specific. In a local church, as we equip women to this high and holy calling, it's very exciting. It's women investing in women to encourage and equip them to live for God's glory. Well, and I do believe that there, there can be a generational divide, that, mm -hmm. that because of different values or pride or independence, um, we don't go and ask the older women around us to pour into us and invest in us. So what would it look like for that bridge to be built, you know? First, let me address uh, that sometimes women, younger women do go to older women. Let me just tell you a quick story. Yeah. A woman at a conference told me, a young woman, she said, I, I asked an older woman to disciple me about six months ago, and she readily agreed and I'm devastated because I have not heard from her since. Mm, but my that. response to her was, as devastated as you are, I suspect that older woman is even more devastated because she agreed because she wanted to do this, but she doesn't have a clue what to do. Mm. And every day she wakes up thinking, I should make contact, but I do not know what to do. And that's where we've got to come in through our women's ministry in our local churches and equip women for this. We're not to just tell people they're to do things, no. we're to equip them for it. That's part of the discipleship ministry of the church is to disciple older women. And older is not just chronological age, yeah. it's also spiritual maturity. But I do think there is something beautiful. I mean, I'm just oh, even wonderful. moved sitting here with you and listening and thinking of me reading your mm -hmm. precious theology to my children. I mean. You have invested in me even from a distance and I, I want more of that. And I think as a generation, while we can be arrogant sometimes and prideful, I think we're also longing for some gray hair in our lives that has been there and, yeah. and has a different perspective. There's such value to that. There really is, and none of us, I'm 72 years old and I have not outgrown the mm. longing for spiritual mothers mm. in my life and I'm so thankful that I have them. All of them are not older than I am. Some of them are younger women who they've been through experiences and they challenge me and they equip me and they teach me and so it's a very mutual thing but there is something to be said for women who have lived a certain amount of time we do see life a little differently and for us to share that with younger women the the biblical example there's so many all through scripture but the one that 
is just stunning is when Mary goes to Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. And think oh, about that. Yeah. And, and the angel really set her up for that because the angel said to her, your cousin Elizabeth is with child. And that must have triggered something in Mary that made her think, oh yeah, one generation is to tell the next generation. And so scripture tells us she hurried to Elizabeth's home. Mm. And that's and what we what need to do. And what a comfort she was to Mary. And I, mm. I just think that we're all longing for that connection. I do too. And it's just being brave enough to, to reach out for it. And sometimes I imagine that would come from the younger women and sometimes it comes from the older women believing that because of Christ, they are enough to go and do this. Yes, it and isn't. it really is a way of life. Hmm. And it's the way of life that we should all be pursuing. But the reality is, particularly today, with um, society so mobile, most people do not live in family systems like they used to. You don't have your aunts and your grandmothers and all of that around. And plus we have bought the cultural lie that independence is power and that we're not supposed to need other people. And this is where we need the church to step in. And we've tried to provide resources to equip women's ministries on um, equipping women and actually setting up Titus II ministries to connect women with one another. It would be wonderful if it just happened, but the reality is it doesn't always. We need to jump start it a bit. Yeah, well thank you for what you're doing. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Jen.